The Cold War was characterized by major tensions that existed between the United States and the Soviet Union. But what exactly was the origin of the Cold War? And just how did it affect the global political landscape? Stick around as we explore yet another historical event in today's video. But before we get right to it, make sure to give this video a like and hit that subscribe button. Do leave us a comment as well, as we'd love to read your opinions about the Cold War. Ready? Let's get straight to it. The Cold War refers to the period of sustained rivalry and tension that existed between the United States of America and the Soviet Union following the Second World War. Following Germany's defeat during World War II, Nazi Germany saw the US as its greatest foe. America was likewise circumspect of the Soviet's communist reign as traces of the expansionist ideas it still held the prospects of expansionism. The US grew concerned over the Soviet's leader, Joseph Stalin's intimidating approach to government. The Soviets blamed the US for delaying its involvement in the war against Germany, which resulted in the loss of lives for the Russians. Both countries developed overwhelming enmity towards each other over the coming years. The Soviet Union pursued expansionist policy by occupying new territories shortly after the Second World War. Americans didn't take this action lightly. It merely perceived Soviet expansionism as a strategic ploy to occupy territories and eventually control the world. Meanwhile, the Soviet Union didn't like the American interventionist approach to international relations and its excessive arms buildup. The Soviet Union saw the US stockpile of arms and nuclear weapons as a threat and started developing its nuclear program as well. The Cold War that existed between the two countries was inevitable. The United States decided that the most effective way to reduce the threat of the Soviet Union's expansion was to employ a strategy called containment. So America made it its sole responsibility to pursue long-term monitoring and containment of any Russian expansionist tendencies in any part of the world. United States diplomat George Kenner declared before Congress in 1947 to support free persons who are resisting attempted subjugation from external countries. The United States containment strategy prompted the country to pursue an unprecedented arms buildup and stockpile of atomic weapons. The US believed that by stockpiling and developing major destructive weapons, it would automatically keep an expansionist country like the Soviet Union and any other communist expansionist country at bay. In 1949, the Soviets tested their first atomic bomb, and America responded by building a more destructive nuclear bomb. The two countries would fill up their military armaments with nuclear weapons over time, and the tension between both countries grew. The 1950s and 1960s were characterized by the age of nuclear warhead testing between the two countries. People would often be involved in nuclear drills in schools and major government institutions, and bomb shelters were being built as tensions and fear of a nuclear war were growing rapidly. The 1950s depicted an era of space exploration for both countries. You see, the rivalry that existed between both countries was not entirely about territories or weapons, but also about which country could deliver breakthroughs and inventions in the field of science first. On October 4, 1957, a Soviet R-7 intercontinental ballistic missile launched Sputnik, the world's first artificial satellite and the first manufactured object to be placed into space. This recent achievement by the Soviets came as a big shock and a motivator for the Americans because they did not want to lose, more than anything to the Soviet Union. In America, the exploration of space was seen as the next grand war thing, and the fact that the Soviets could install a satellite in space did not sit well with most Americans. This made the United States gather more information and intelligence about Soviet military activities. In 1958, the United States launched its satellite, Explorer 1, which was designed by the American Army under the supervision of American rocket scientist Werner von Braun. In the same year, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA, was created by President Dwight Eisenhower as a federal agency dedicated to research, exploration of space, and more importantly, the military potential of space exploration. In 1961, the Soviets launched the first man into space in April, while America was still lagging. The United States also made sure they launched the first American, Alan Shepard, into space, and President John F. Kennedy made a public claim to land a man on the moon by the end of the decade. Although this was just a claim at the time, on July 20th, 1969, the United States, through NASA, landed the first man on the moon, and the United States at the time became the first country to ever land a man on the surface of the moon. John F. Kennedy's claim had come to fruition. 
Neil Armstrong became the first man to walk the surface of the moon in NASA's Apollo 11 mission. This feat gave America worldwide recognition and respect, and proving that America had won the space race. The Soviet Union supported and backed North Korea in the subjugation of its southern counterpart, South Korea, in June 1950. The United States saw this as a Soviet indirect method of influencing other countries and taking control of other territories, and in turn, responded by intervening by supporting South Korea. President Harry Truman sent American troops down to support the war efforts, which made the war drag into a stalemate, and both parties were forced to reconcile. Although both countries never attacked each other on any front, they were both involved in international conflicts with many other countries, where the Soviets would support one side and the US would support the other. The Cold War between the United States and the Soviets would take new turns when Richard Nixon became the President of the United States. Nixon encouraged the United Nations to recognize the Communist Chinese government and started establishing diplomatic relations with China. He visited China in 1972 for diplomatic relations in Beijing. He also adopted the policy of détente, meaning relaxation towards the Soviet Union, and in 1972, he made the United States and the Soviet Union under Leonid Brezhnev sign the Strategic Arms Limitation Treaty, which placed a ban on the production of nuclear weapons by both countries. Although Nixon tried as much as possible to maintain a non-hostile and diplomatic relation with the Soviets, the Cold War would again be reignited shortly after Ronald Reagan became the new President of the United States of America in 1981. Reagan was not as diplomatic as his predecessor, and he believed that the spread of communism anywhere in the world will always pose a threat to freedom everywhere. His belief led him to provide financial aid and military support to anti-communist governments and insurgencies all over the world. The Soviet Union, on the other hand, was on the brink of disintegration and eventually disintegrated in response to its internal economic problems and growing political uprising in the USSR. The Premier Mikhail Gorbachev took office in 1985, following Soviet integration and the formation of Russia. He redefined the political relationship that Russia had with most other countries and called for restructuring of the country's policies. By 1989, the Soviet Union's communist influence on many Eastern European countries had disappeared and most communist states had transformed into non-communist ones. The threat to America was no more.